we went through quite a little run in November and December. Will the market run more with a spot ETF approval that may be coming, maybe even January 10th, or is that already priced in? We take a look at the charts today and see what the price action can tell us. We also have a number of altcoin suggestions from the audience, including DeFi and blockchain gaming projects. We will take a look at those and some live audience suggestions as well, and I see already some coming in. Welcome to the Crypto Rain channel and our family. If you, like me, came into crypto because you realized the potential for life-changing gains over a four to eight year period, and you're looking for a discussion on becoming a solid and shakeable, savage crypto investor, like a Navy SEAL of crypto investing, you're in exactly the right place in the right family, the Rainmaker family. Now, I was once new to crypto seven years ago, and back then I was looking for a crypto channel and a group that understood crypto as an investment and discussed important things like investment cycles, the different projects and the true pros and cons of those projects, the risks and the guess it upside if it came together. And I didn't find it, so we created it. And I say we because it's not just me anymore. It's a family of rainmakers, and you'll see them here in the chat. You'll see them in our free Telegram group. The link to that is below, and you will definitely find them in our private Patreon group that allows you access to our Rainmaker private Discord. This is where the best discussion and best info is. There are other benefits too, but you will have to join us to find out. Do know I'm not a financial advisor. Paul is also not a financial advisor. We are both investors. Now make it rain on that like button and strap in for the show because you know it's Wednesday and Paul is joining us. Paul, thanks so much for being here. It's great to be here. Um, yes, it is Wednesday. Sometimes we move it around a bit, don't we? Just to keep people guessing. Um, that's usually because one of us are traveling, either you or I. But um, which reminds me, next Wednesday I'm traveling. So uh, maybe at the, the top of the show we could, uh, or the end of the show, we could discuss moving it to Tuesday. But Perfect. other than that, for now, there's a lot to get through and a lot of interesting stuff happening as this year gets to a close. Yes, it is. Um, yeah, there's some interesting November and December in crypto, and it's been nice to have a rally in some sectors within crypto. And um, kind of looking at the charts, trying to get a feel for what might happen next. So it's a good day to have you here and take a look at it with us. Now, what are you seeing in the markets that affect um, money flow? Because money flow going into us dollar and into bonds um takes away money from crypto and and the reverse is also true what are you seeing happening there uh well i think the the general strategy that i've had for most of this year has been for risk on to continue and that certainly has been the case uh we had a, an interruption in october and that was quite a big one quite a nasty one um but overall with regard to crypto, with regard to the equity markets, you know, maintained a more positive outlook than I think you'd find elsewhere. And as we draw to a close this year, it's very obvious on the charts, but perhaps not necessarily in the news flow, that the trend is still upwards. And what may surprise people is quite how far this is going to continue into next year. Um, I mean, we can we can start looking at some charts of the major indices, you know, um, so we pop that up on the chart there. So you can see this is a chart of the Dow Jones Industrials and um, on a long term chart, a five year chart. Uh, we can see the October um, lows and the, the rally from it and the fact that it's gone into a new all time high. Um, now, many times throughout this year, there's been some extremely bearish news that has indicated that you know, people have been looking for a crash or looking for a move down or what have you, but that hasn't been borne out in the charts. In fact, they've been accelerating higher. The question is now, um, will this rally continue in the short term or, or is it about to give up and correct? And there, there is a possibility that we are close to a correction, but if you look at this setup here, we've seen a high point um, on the 20th of December and the market is just coming back up again with rising lows towards this resistance point. So I'm expecting very soon for there to be a break higher. And if there isn't, that will be an indication that there are problems. So 
I need to see this go literally within the next couple of days. Um, and then I think we'll get the final move because the market is still short. I don't believe that the market has bought this at all. Um, so I think we're going to get another squeeze that will attract, then finally attract money in or traders to buy it, and then we'll get a, get a sizable correction. Um, so the Dow Jones, that's looking really good. Uh, if we look at the uh, S&P, that's pretty much the same situation. Um, I'm going to just put the options chart up there. Let me just put the new one. So, yeah, this is the S&P 500 index. It's broken through the same relative high, but it's great to see that the equivalent 500 stocks are trying to break into new highs. So this means that there's a much broader rally that's going on. And if you remember, we were discussing the Russell 2000 many times when looking at risk on. The Russell 2000 being um, a, a, a chart that represents the smaller cap stocks. And even those are, are rallying now. They've broken out. Let's see if I can get, I'm using a different system here. So uh, here we go, Russell 2000. It's on the LSC. That might not be the right one, but let's try it. Um, so the Russell 2000 has started to break out as well. And that's a really good sign. So the most important thing I can see right now, though, and again, this is something that we've talked about extensively, is how the dollar is going down and will go down. And that will attract more money into crypto. It will attract more money into risk on trades. And as we speak, the dollar's having... Um, quite a strong move to the downside. I think it's going to complete. This is a major double top. And I've had long-term targets all the way down at 90. Um, and I still think that's on the card. So this is really setting up a very interesting 2024. Um, I'm not saying it's all going to be a one-way street, but I am saying that all the main signals that have kind of indicated that the market should remain bullish are still in place. So nothing's changed there. Um, and we may get a certain amount of acceleration. So it will be a very interesting time, especially to be in this, uh, the most speculative of all markets, which is crypto, mm -hmm. and even more so in altcoins. Yeah, they're so volatile. I mean, how scary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, the, the volatility is, is incredible, and you won't see that anywhere else in any other product. Um, but with volatility and gains comes, comes you know, risk and reward are inextricably linked. And that volatility means that, yes, there's some great opportunities to make and lose money. And it should be treated with that in mind, you know, with, and there's nothing that's a, a sure deal in any market, but let alone in these markets when they are so volatile. But at least the underlying structure of the market is bullish. And if I... If I could turn to the Bitcoin chart, we were looking at this. Um, this is a weekly chart of Bitcoin. We were looking at this triangular constriction. Now, I mentioned a couple of times on the way up that that I didn't think the market would give or this market would give participants a chance to get in. And it seems to be bearing that out. Now, this looks very triangular to me, um, like a triangular constriction. As long as this this low point stays in roughly around 41 42 or well 41 and a half maybe late 40s is fine i don't want to see it break 45 40 um 500 or 40000 that would be a sell signal for me a short term sell signal so when i look at this my feeling is that we're going to get one more move strong move to the upside possibly on this news of of uh, the bitcoin etf possibly on some other form of news. Um, I heard something about Google and their advertising on Bitcoin cryptocurrencies, maybe easing, could be something like that. But whatever it is, um, from a technical perspective, this is looking like it's going to continue the upward trend and we'll perhaps see one last move. But anything that draws people into the market at this late stage, I personally would be very um, cautious about. I think then I'm going to get ready for a correction. So perhaps not yet. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe it is now. But I think maybe one more strong move, possibly towards 48,000, um, maybe even 50. But there's 48,000 has 
good resistance there. So if we get one more move there, then I think it's time for a correction. And there will be a correction. There has to be one. Um, it's just a question of where, where it will be. So I'm, I'm working on that basis that risk on seems to be OK for now. And I think it will be OK for the rest of the year or rest of 2024. But um, we cannot look at a one one way move the whole time. So we do need to look at a correction. Yeah, it almost always goes two steps forward, one step back, even in a bull market. Sometimes it goes three steps forward, one step back or three steps forward, two steps back. So a, a pullback would be expected, just as Jose is saying here. I want to give a shout out to Nurse Cooper um, with the rain fan. Black Indian has some suggestions for us to take a look at. Um, <laughs> what's happening? Uh, it just makes re reminds me when one of those came out in 2021 and did gangbusters. It had such a funny name. Um, really caught the attention of everyone as crypto was going crazy. Um, Justin was asking, do you use a v VPN to buy one? Um, you can literally use one chain site to bridge funds over to one chain, and then you would be able to use one swap to exchange them. Except for like, I don't know how you get some initial one over there. I I've had one chain on my on my MetaMask for forever, so like you literally just need one one. I mean, Justin, we're friends. I could send you a, a couple one um, if you you can bridge over ETH over there or something from the ETH network. And then you can use one swap to turn that in to buy one is one of the ways you can do it. You can bridge over USDT from the Ethereum network or a different network using one chain site. So that's the easiest way in the, if you're in, in the U S because one chain is on Binance, HTX, um, and XC.com. None of which I think you can access from the U S these days. I see. Right. That's why you have to use your VPN. That's, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> well, right? even they so. put in measures like Binance using your VPN. You can't get in HTX. I don't think you can get in with just a VPN either. Mm. Uh, some some you can, but they've kind of closed a lot of those doors. They're just worried about the U.S. SEC coming after them. And even if mm. they win a lawsuit, they lose by having to spend tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars fighting the SEC. Mm. So they just closed all the doors to American money. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, um, so we looked at the Bitcoin chart. What do you see going on with ETH? And what's funny is whenever I hear people saying, "Oh, Bitcoin's so much stronger than ETH," and like ETH's not performing well, blah blah blah, it always makes me more interested in ETH because, like. It, ETH is a major player these days, and I hear a lot of people actually talking bad about it and how it's not going to survive and Solana is going to replace it. And it just has such a broad use by so many people and the layer twos built on it. I don't think he's ever going away. No, I, I mean, certainly not for the short term. Um, but yeah, I can understand that people are perhaps a little bit frustrated that this rally has been seen in, in, in Bitcoin and it is one of the majors that should have followed. But if you look at the chart, it's actually looking like it may finally outperform. And I was looking at a break over this 2132 area um, as we approached it. It's broken through. It's come back for a retest. Technically, it's playing out quite nicely. We do need to see one more sharp move, which could involve everything. Maybe it would just be ETH. I'm not sure. Uh, that would be a, a very interesting rotational sign. If Bitcoin comes down and ETH goes up, it would just tell us perhaps we're, we're reaching the end of this phase of this bull move that's been going on for quite some time now. And we're ready for a correction. So it will give us some good information regardless. But overall, I really like the ETH chart. I, I still think it's ready to move higher. And I, in fact, we're seeing that today. If we go into the daily chart, this looks like a triangular constriction and it's reaching for a breakout um, of this prior high. So, you know, I really like this triangular constriction here. That was great. Um, but it hasn't moved much from it. It's moved above it and it's used this support, bounced off it. And now it's readying up for a new move to the upside. So 
I want to see it take this high out at 2400 and then let's look at where it could go. I mean, it could have, you know, far more, could have, a, you know, quite a lot more to go on the upside, um, especially if it's going to catch up. I mean, this this looks, I mean, on the long-term chart, it really does look like it could go much further. Um, 2700 would be my next next area, 2705, that, that sort of place. So if we get up there, I think fantastic. Um, I'd like to see what the news flow is around that time, whether there's, I'm, I'm, again, I'm waiting for that final sort of everyone rushing in because the news flow is so bullish, very short term. Um, and that's where I'm going to start to get a little bit cautious about buying into, you know, the market or perhaps using it as an opportunity to sell and then rebuy when it comes back down again. But as far as the long term goes, there's no need to really change a bullish view until we break this this trend line and it's starting to accelerate up here anyway. So this is potentially on the verge of a strong breakout to the upside, which is very interesting in my view. Yeah, I, I think ETH is here to stay, or at least, like you said, for the near future. Long term, it's really hard to tell because infrastructure can move over to different chains, and that's become easier than ever before. But, uh, yeah, for it would take a while for so much infrastructure to move over. Now, is the ETH chain very efficient? No, it's terribly inefficient. It's very expensive. Um, it's a little bit unwieldy. So is it a viable long-term solution? Maybe not. Maybe there will be other things that come and take the spotlight, but, um, that's assuming ETH doesn't continue to change and layer twos don't continue to make it more viable, which probably is going to happen. Um, yeah, we'll get into some of the altcoin picks. We're going to go through Matic, Immutable X, Arbitrum, Flare, Ave, Miria, Cetus, and Juan. I did want to address Dino's question. He said, I noticed no one really talks about Omi anymore. Even Randy has slowed down. He is covering it more Earth 2 now. Um, this is the funny thing about price action when it feels very boring is nobody wants to cover it very much. It's just kind of a human reaction to try to stay away from it because the price action is boring. Um, that's usually when the price is really, really good. And so like... Omi, I'm a huge fan of. I've been buying more at these prices, and I'll continue to buy more. All right, uh, let's take a look at Matic. Matic's had a little bit of movement this morning. Yeah, again, Matic was one I think we talked about last week. Um, if not, it was the week before that, saying that this was a major triangular constriction, and we're waiting for a breakout, um, looking for the signs of acceleration. Um, it's funny how, you know, it's actually just done that, almost bang on cue. Um, but this was the the strong breakout that's taken us out of this triangular constriction. And it should have more to run. Um, 1.3, $1.5. And then we'll be looking at a move towards, you know, all-time highs. Um, it, it was very notable that, that in the correction, this has been... I'd say a little more muted on the downside. I suppose in percentage terms, it has moved quite a lot, but this was its main run and it didn't give up that much of it. So it was always one that I really liked, but had to wait until we saw evidence of acceleration of price or break out from this range. And we're getting that sign. So um, it's still a buy. And, you know, I, I think it's uh, an interesting time to be looking at it. As far as short-term resistance goes, one dollar sort of twenty-seven to one point three zero would be where it may stop um, on in the short term. So I'd look for a, perhaps a pullback from there. But I'd like to tie it in again to what the majors are doing. Um, if they're starting to correct, then it would be the final move potentially for these as well. Um, but for the moment. Yeah, great breakout. Um, I'm bullish on it generally, and uh, it seems to be confirming with the price action. Yes, for breakout traders, um, gosh, especially those in the blue chip sector, like this is a textbook break to the upside. So fantastic to see Matic doing well. Matic, I, I, they have really, I, I, they've been around for a very long time. And I remember before they went through this astronomical price increase, 
um, yeah, the team is very hardworking, smart, and have continued to develop. They have a lot of projects that use Matic because the fees are so much less expensive than ETH. It works pretty well. Um, so Polygon or Matic getting some attention in the market. I would say it's a buy too, just because it's a breakout. Now, am I buying it? No, I, I don't hold. Um, I don't hold many blue chips at all, and this is solidly in the blue chip category. In fact. Let me share my screen. I'm going to share with you what the market cap is. Market cap's at $10 billion, And so it's just outside the threshold of what I'm looking for. The multiples aren't as high as what I'm trying to get. But at $1.07, like, where could it go? Well, I, I would expect this bull run. It, it exceeds its previous high. And for some people, that's the kind of returns they're looking for. It is a textbook break to the upside. So um, for swing traders, it's not even a bad move for those trying to catch some action. And um, yeah, so I would rate it a buy. Am I actually going to buy it? No, I don't have funds available sitting on the side for just active trading. So sometimes I do, but at present, I don't have any funds sitting on the side for that, or I probably would trade this. All right, let's jump over to our next one, which is Immutable X. Yeah, just before we go from um, from Matic, just note that that volume has moved up a lot. So I, those of you who are probably following the fundamentals a lot more closely, maybe they've made an announcement or it could just be one of those situations where the market is looking around for things that haven't moved yet and notice that this one hasn't gone and they're buying up the uh, all everything or anything that hasn't moved yet. Um, whether it's right or not that's kind of how the market likes to work it says oh that hasn't moved yet and everything else is moving jump on it before somebody else does so it, in some ways it's a, a little self-fulfilling but you know market psychology is what drives everything but either way there's there could have been some good news out but volume's definitely gone up so that's an interesting point to know um so on a mutable x uh this is one that i'm I've really liked. Um, I know I, I don't tend to look at market caps. I just tend to look at how the price action is developing. And this was a major double bottom. Um, we talked about how the trend was smooth and moving to the upside before. Main breakout was at $1.55, although we got some signals before that level. Um, the main resistance comes in at $2.76 sort of to 80 maybe, um, around that area. And... It's uh, consolidating or had a little consolidation, but the trend is still up. So as far as my discipline with technical analysis goes, it's still a buy um, until it gives a signal in this area that it has reversed. But this is a very nice trend. It's been going on for quite some time now and uh, it will correct at some point. Um, but for the moment, the evidence or the probability is still for further moves to the upside. So for me, it's still on the buy list. Nice. I like Immutable X fundamentally. I liked it a lot more when we were looking at it at 52 cents, which is when I was like, oh, it's massively in my buy zone. I was able to get some, not as much as I wanted. Um, and this is one I followed for a long time. I really like it fundamentally. When it first came out, uh, it came out just after the bull market ended and the price fell with the bear market pretty much. And it hit some really amazing buy zones um, down here. So the second touchdown, it didn't quite go as far as I would have liked, but it did go down just under 50 cents. And at this price, I was like, this is amazing. And it looks like it's setting up for a move up, which is exactly what happened. And so now it's gone 5X from there. So for me, uh, it's not a buy for me at this point. Um, even though fundamentally I like it a lot, the market cap is at 3.2 billion. So it's solidly in um, blue chip category, but I think this is a blue chip that could still do pretty well from here. Not as well as before, because just think, you know, when it was, before it went 5X, that market cap was only 600 million and now it's 3.2 billion. So it's already made part of the move 
And so let's say that Immutable X was going to do 100x in total. Well, from this price, there might only be 20x left. And that's if it was going to do 100x total. So Immutable X at this price is totally a weight. It's got to come back down and be more attractive. Even though I think it's got a pretty decent future, I... And I think for many people, the kind of gains that Immutable X can have from here would be amazing. It's just going to underperform versus what some other things might do. So that's why uh, for me, it's not a buy, especially because it's about to get to previous um, previous points and probably come back down and retrace a little bit. All right, let's take a look at Flare. Uh, is ARB next or we can? Oh, flare. yes. A ARB, I missed that. You're right. Yeah. Um, so ARB, um, wasn't exactly sure what this one was. So, yeah, you know, Arbitrum versus USD. A, yeah. I mean, it could be, could be a few, but I'm guessing it's this one. Um, so there's not a whole lot of data on this. So it's obviously, um, uh, highly speculative because of that short-term trend looking great i mean there was a double bottom there's a ascending triangle pattern here and we've it's breaking out into new highs on this particular chart other than that i don't know any more about it so if i could only trade this and i had to take a position i would i would buy it but knowing nothing else about it i'd have to be a little bit more cautious and say you know i, I really you know, would rather see some some more data, and I don't mind buying something that's breaking into a new high, but I can buy something that has more data and is a little bit more established, um, which is in the same position. So, in the real world, I'd have a choice. But overall, if like I'm saying with this particular chart, just reading this one, this is looking good. So, um, I would think a stop for me would be below one dollar twenty four. If it closes below there uh, on a two-day basis, then I perhaps bail out the bail out of it. But it's looking good. Um, trend is up, so let's see what happens. But definitely far more risky than some of the other ones. Yeah, there there isn't the price history as you said on Arbitrum. It has um, it has got a lot of momentum already. I want to share. It's already out on Coinbase Exchange, on Binance. You can get on Uniswap, KuCoin, Gate.io. Basically, if you're in the U.S., you're able to get it directly on Coinbase. Which, And if you're outside the U.S., you can essentially get on Binance, which is a fantastic exchange. Um, and so the availability for anyone to be able to buy it is there. But it's getting a lot of momentum, kind of like... Uh, so I know Bumper, one of the ones that I've been following really closely. They they also bridged over to Arbitrum because essentially um, the fees are like one one hundredth or one one thousandth of the price so that people can use their protection for way cheaper than on the ETH network. And it was always the plan for them to develop on the ETH network and then bridge over to a layer two solution that worked out. And so Arbitrum is what they chose. Now it shows it is 87% down from its uh, all. I, I don't know where that is coming from. Um, the best chart history I can get goes back to March of 2023. And there isn't a lot of price history on here. I do look at the market cap, 2 billion. If this continues to get some traction as a great solution and the bull market comes in, it, it is a market cap that could go to 20 billion or maybe even a hundred billion. Beyond that, who knows? I think we'll reach uncharted territory in this bull run that some market caps will go to prices you can't even fathom at this point. Not because they should, but because the pendulum swings too far each side, right? So when things correct, they overcorrect. And when they swing, they swing wildly and market caps reach prices they probably should never hit, but yet they do. So... Uh, Arbitrum, if they continue to get more momentum and as DeFi becomes a bigger deal, I think Arbitrum could do pretty well, although it is in the blue chip category. Uh, I think it's a chain that could have some good momentum, but I'm 
I'm not buying blue chips. And if I was buying blue chips, I'd probably buy some of this and just hold it in a portfolio of maybe with 20 other blue chips. Um, I like Arbitrum and I think it's at a decent price for where it's at. But um, overall, I'm not buying it myself. I'm just in riskier projects than Arbitrum. Cool. Let's take a look now at Flare. Okay. Um, so Flare. So Flare again is one that we've we've covered before. Looking good technically. Um, had a very nice breakout at uh, this area here. Uh, what's that? It's at one point two cents. Ran into resistance. Had a little consolidation just below. That's kind of perfect. One point five was the strong breakout. Now what it's done since then is it's been a bit volatile. Um, slight concern that it's seen highs and it's come back down again but it's it is holding over the breakout point so we allow for a breakout and a pullback and a bit of, of a consolidation which we're kind of seeing in in eth um so if we look at the way that's broken out and then consolidated but that consolidation in eth is more compressed whereas here it's quite a wild swing which makes me a little bit cautious now, if I was long, I would probably just hold on to it um, and just see how it trades. But if I had the choice of sort of buying here from, from a, a standing start, zero position, I might be a little bit more inclined to wait and just see how this plays out and try and take it on a break to the upside. Um, so I think that will probably sort of boil down to a short-term wait even though I do like the long-term chart, I do think there's going to be more upside there. I just want to see whether this becomes a bit more corrective back down to one and a half cents again, and then it carries on again, or whether it's going to try and break out of this with a strong move. Um, it's, it's really a wait just to see how this resolves itself as opposed to you know waiting because I don't particularly like the overall chart. I do like the chart. Um, it's just that this is this needs to be resolved here. And it's it's on the edge of being um, it's gone from being a continuation pattern to potentially a reversal pattern. It's it's sort of it could be either. And it's too close to call right at this point. Um, normally, continuation patterns are much flatter, more compressed. And it's a bit more obvious. I allow a bit more room when we're, we're looking at altcoins because they tend to be a bit more volatile. Um, but even given that, that is quite volatile. So I, I, I want just want to see how it trades, really. But we should come back to it. So thanks for mentioning it. And um, you know, I think in a couple of weeks' time, we should review it and see how it's broken out from this consolidation. Yeah, it has run pretty strong. It would make sense that it corrects back down some, at least from the charting perspective. Now, I haven't followed the fundamentals on Flare very closely at all. Um, it is available pretty much everywhere. So you can get on Coinbase, you can get on KuCoin. So if you're outside the U.S., you can easily get on KuCoin. If you're inside the U.S., you can get on Coinbase. It's on OKX. So it's available to Asia, anywhere people want to buy it. Market cap is half a billion. Um, their website basically connect everything now if i'm remembering right flare is associated with xrp and it, it is to allow kind of smart contracts to work with them and i really haven't gotten involved in flare very closely um i've recently become a bigger fan of xrp actually thanks to some in the rainmaker community who have filled me in on some of the deeper research on what's going on in the rails being built for xrp that even though XRP has such a high market cap already, it could still do the kind of numbers that are interesting to me. So I don't know what that would then mean for Flare. I can't say I, I understand the connection between the two very well, other than there is a connection. Um, however, it has been running up. And so, like I said, two steps forward, one step back. I thought Paul's chart was a lot more indicative of what the chart actually looks like. Um, so let me... See if I can find it on 
here. So a pretty strong run. And a lot of times they'll just crack down for a little bit so that it'll take some breathing room and give you some breathing room. And that's the type of time I would be looking for an entry for. So for now, it's just a wait, even if I was interested in flare, because I, I would give it like a 60% chance that it just pulls back enough for a little bit juicier entry. So that's what I'd be looking for. All right, let's take a look over at where are we at? Ave. Ave? Yeah. Ave. Now, what, what's interesting, so Immutable X and some of the other ones we'll look at are in the blockchain gaming space. Ave is solidly in DeFi, and DeFi has not been running yet. But at some point, DeFi is gonna has a really strong narrative. And so Ave is one of the canaries in the coal mine when you're looking to see when DeFi is ready to run. I think it's a... Uh... I think it's a sector which could, you know, outperform all others, really. Um, but this is, I mean, you're right that it, it has been in the doldrums, but this is a basing setup and it's pushing against really good resistance here at 115. Um, we've got rising lows on the pullback, which is really good. So looks like it's ready to go and it could be very soon. So it's running towards this resistance. I don't know if that is... The correct high at 117 it may just be a print up there that's um you know incorrect looks a little spiky but let's assume that it is correct we've got a resistance zone that it needs to take out between 115 and 117 but once it does that um yeah there's some resistance at 122 but i think it should be through the worst and we could be looking at a move towards sort of 130 140 possibly even 150 um, especially if it's going to recover, you know, th this trend on the downside. It was quite choppy on the downside, so there is some, you know, there'll be lots of resistance points along the way to, to look for pullbacks. But overall, this trend has been up. It's basing. Um, it's been up from, from September 23. And, um, it, it, you know, like we say, there could be a big recovery play in the sector as well. So for me, it's a buy. Awesome. One of the interesting things, and I don't think about it this way, or I hadn't thought about it this way, but a lot of the bigger players, especially that come from traditional finance, when they're looking to what to buy, they just look for exposure in some sectors. So we saw when um, the metaverse plays were running in later 2021 that people just bought investors bought sandbox's token sand and they bought um, decentraland's token mana and the tokens themselves even though the use case was like fairly limited you could really just use the token to buy things on their exchange or their like nft market or to buy their land it really didn't have a strong use case and yet people the tokens did incredibly well. And so as I was figuring out what had happened there, what happens is a lot of times big money just wants exposure to things. So they look for blue chips in that sector and then they just buy their token. And so that's why I'm looking at Ave and I'm looking for when their token is ready to break out because as DeFi runs, what will happen is a lot of big money They'll just go to the blue chips in that sector and they'll just buy the token and hold it. And so Aave being one of the um, most solid blue chips in the DeFi space, Aave is kind of the canary in the coal mine for me. So I'm, it actually, the chart looks pretty good. Um, it's hit this nice bottom. It's not as cheap as it was. It's doubled from its bottom. I'm not holding blue chips. It's at 1.6 billion. If I were holding blue chips, I would absolutely be buying uh, a good amount of Ave just to hold it because DeFi has been out of the narrative for a while. It's been out of the narrative probably too long and it will come back in the narrative. And when it does, like Ave was Ethland way back in the day and Ave did like a 1000 X during the bear market of 2020. So incredible gains. That's the kind of gains that like DeFi can have, not on a project that now has a market cap of 1.6 billion, but it can shows you how important that sector is. And when it runs, it can really run. Um, really good question in the comments. Um, 
I saw, where did it go? Robert, Roberto Araya says, the metaverse is kind of boring right now. Any thoughts on ApeCoin? Thanks. Um, that's exactly what I've been thinking, Roberto, is that nobody's talking about metaverses right now, which is when like they're attractive and it's specifically their land. So not just ape coins, interesting, but board ape, the land associated with it. Um, one of my good friends has been actually stocking up on the land. Now they did just release some utility for the land. And so all of a sudden the price is like doubled, which was unfortunate. So I haven't picked up any, but I am watching land for the metaverses like networks land. Uh, basically sandboxes land is pretty cheap. I, I really don't mess with Decentraland. I just don't know if it's updated enough to stay like relevant. So I don't want, you know, it to be like the MySpace or something of social media. So I'm, I stay away from Decentraland, but, um, sandbox and some of the newer ones are very interesting to me. And I think ApeCoin or board ape yacht clubs land very interesting to me also their tokens associated with it all right so ave is only a buy if i were buying blue chips otherwise like not for me um let's go on to the next one miria miria i've been tracking closely because it tracks blockchain gaming and been watching what miria is doing i hold a ton of miria as well myself so i'm heavily invested in this project yeah uh so i think we looked at miria last week as well and um again overall the chart has been bullish it's been breaking out to the upside it's had a bit of a spike um and rejected highs up here but that's really in the context of this very strong upward trend so um not enough to say that there's a full reversal as yet but enough to just throw a little bit of doubt as to whether it's going to be a smooth ride to the upside. So, you know, on balance, I think it's bullish. On balance, I think there will be another move higher. But I wouldn't want to see it trade any lower than this 0.9% level here. I think for me, that would just be a step too far. So it's actually bounced from a fairly decent point. Um, and I, I'd like to see it take out this resistance at 1.1 cents. That for me is very key, especially in the short term. I mean, in the long term, I, I, you know, the trend is solid and the buy signals came from much lower down. So I can't imagine that people really want to bail out unless there's something um, fundamentally changing about the overall outlook for the for the project. Uh, and, you know, a correction is not a bad thing in any market. It just stops it from becoming completely overbought in all one way. And we'd rather a long-term upward trend than just a short-term you know, spike up and then a rejection because that doesn't give anyone a chance to get out anyway. Um, so overall, it's a buy. It's a cautious buy at these levels. And I'm sure we're going to look at it again. But um, I, I think the longer-term outlook might be a bit more assured than the shorter-term outlook. But just watch this resistance here at 1.1, 1, 1 1.2 1 cents. Uh, I'd really like to see that go for the next phase. Yeah, it is interesting. It's kind of like for me a 50-50 on whether it just comes for a short-term bigger pullback or it keeps running. It's been on a pretty high trajectory. And so I, I don't know which way it's going to go from here. So obviously I hold a lot. I would like it to break up and go up all the way to two and a half cents before having a bigger pullback. Well, we'll see how this plays out. Long term, I think Miria's got phenomenal potential. I own a ton of nodes. I'm probably going to buy some more if the tokens break to the upside further um, because you buy them in tokens, but the nodes are a specific dollar amount. So the higher the token price goes, the less tokens it takes to buy more nodes is my thinking on that. Uh, so for me, it's not a buy for the token at this price. It's too shaky on whether it will come back down. I, I like to take better odds for that. The nodes I think are still a value, but not the, the token. I was seeing the praises of this token at 0.11 and 0.17 cents as strongly in my buy zone at this price. It's gone from even the 
that higher part is it's gone 6x from the higher part of that range and it's gone 10x from the lower part of that range so um yeah the token is not a buy for me the token itself is a take profits and distribute into other things or buy more nodes uh or other things at this price until it comes back down and does a retrace where i can make entries that the odds are more in my favor so i love miria i love what they're doing i think they've got an amazing future it's just the price is already six to ten x i can't in good faith buy more tokens at this price this is a take profit or not really even a take profit zone it's too early for that but it's a zone i i do sell some to roll into other things that haven't moved much and i have done that with miria i've used that to buy more omi i've used that to buy some other projects i have a course the top two undervalued projects that nobody's talking about the link to that is below i have put in thousands and thousands of dollars into those two projects because they're massively undervalued and you'll see if you end up taking that course and figuring out what the projects are you will see my buys in there and they've been significant all right so the next one we'll take a look at is cetus so cetus again i think is one that we looked at last week and i think it was enough of in this consolidation zone for me to be biased on the upside i don't know i can't remember what i said now i would have to go back and have a look um but this looked like it was a potential double top which would have been corrective so most definitely i would have said if it had broken below this low it would be time to get out and look for a correction um but we need to see how it would play out from here uh, so it's, it's kind of done that. Um, I would have tried to stay on the bullish side because that's what I do when I'm macro bullish. Uh, I try to stick with the trend as much as possible. But it's now given that signal that it wants to correct. So from a long term perspective, I don't think it changes the outlook. I think the, the outlook is still bullish. This is just a corrective phase. But this corrective phase will allow... Um, depending on how far it comes back down again, you know, a, a rebuy zone. It could come as far as this uh, three cents area, but probably if it's going to be a good trend, it won't go that far. But for me, it's it's a wait, um, perhaps even a sell to take profits before we see the next move to the upside. I, th I think I'd class it as a wait for now, just because there is still a chance it could get another win to the upside. But um on balance for me i i'd be standing aside so it's a wait here yeah for me it's definitely a wait at this i i, I hold just a little bit of the cetus token i loaded up more on their other token senate um but cetus ha carries this token carries the same name as the project it's a little bit easier for people to understand what project we're talking about when we look at this token the tokenomics are just slightly different between the two tokens though there's a lot of similarities and they both have run pretty solidly so let me share my screen and why see. why do they have two tokens what's the what's the thinking there in, in blockchain gaming it's been done like that by a couple of projects so the senate token is used for governance and for buying other things within the ecosystem than what the CDIS mm. token can buy. So it really is just probably a way to raise more funds. Yeah. As they were raising funds. Um, so Senate token, notice, or CDIS token, notice how it's run like this. And you're going to see a similar thing with the Senate token. Let me pull up another window so that we can easily just flip between the two. Senate. It is a little bit confusing for people that are new and they're like, wait, because um, only one carries the name. But you'll see it went from its bottoms of just under two cents. So it's it's still a sitting at about 10 X of where it was. Now it was even up higher all the way to as high as 32 cents. So it's retraced pretty significantly from its highs. This one went all the way up to 
0.8 cents essentially and I, about a similar level retracement so they were i was saying that there were very juicy buys down here and in our discord we were talking about ones i was most interested in i think in one of our private discord community chats um although also on some of the public videos i really liked this project and when it was doing poorly i was highly interested in it so many of our community loaded up on specifically the senate token some also on the CETAS token, which has had tremendous gains. But when you have tremendous gains, like if, when you lock in these kind of profits and you're up 10x, that means that those funds, when you roll them into something else, if you roll it into something else that then does it 20x, well, then your overall gains are 200x. Now, do I believe that Senate and CETAS have a better future even from what they're at? I do, but... They've had pretty sharp gains. And as you see, like a lot of times things pull back. So it's not a bad time to harvest some gains. The blockchain gaming narrative has been running pretty strong. That doesn't run forever. The narrative then switches to something else. And the crypto ADHD community just then focuses on that other narrative and starts throwing money in those other narratives usually. Even when the bigger bull market happens, what will happen is sectors within the bigger crypto community will run really, really hard. And then the focus will shift to something else that then runs really, really hard. So we've kind of seen a smaller version of that with blockchain gaming running so strong. All right. Not a bad place to take some profits and celebrate some big wins there. One chain, uh, for me, it's actually a sell and, um, even I really like these projects. So me selling, some it means i'm going to be buying some more later if it comes back to an attractive price okay let's so take a look go ahead sorry yeah i was just going to say just uh, looking at web zombies comment um about the gameplay in board eight and i think it's really important that gameplay is good because that's you can have the fanciest graphics in the world but if you haven't got a good game and people just aren't going to come back to it. So I think it's really, I mean, obviously Web Zombies knows a lot more about gaming than I do. Um, so, I, but I just thought that was a really interesting comment because you, you see it in, you know, in the world of film as well. They try to sort of cover up for a bad story with, you know, good CGI and, and other things. But ultimately a good story in a film and, a you know, a good gameplay in a game, even if the graphics aren't as good, you know, that's what really attracts people. So they have to understand that that's, that's what works. Yeah. I like what they've done. They threw that game together fairly short order, which is hard to do so that they could have a game out. So their gameplay was really basic. It was pretty good graphics, but there's a lot of game engines that allow you to do that kind of thing pretty fast. So What's interesting is if I'm right and the metaverse narrative happens again, it'll possibly happen before really the metaverses are really big, ready to go like and have everybody in them. And so there will be some forgiveness on things not being perfect or things not being launched yet because money will just start being thrown at all the top metaverse plays. And I think Board Ape Yacht Club and their Ape Coin and their LAN has put themselves squarely in that. So that I think it'll do well. Now, will they ultimately survive? It depends on how good their metaverse is and how good the gameplay is. So they do have a whole lot of money and they've used that money to hire some very smart people. So my guess is things will turn out pretty good. But you never know. Sometimes with wrong leadership or bad decisions from leadership, um, a lot of money can be spent and their end product really sucks. Yeah, and a good point was made about the metaverse being, it had actually gone on the back burner, hadn't it? I hadn't heard mm -hmm. a lot about it. And, you know, I bought Decentraland. I don't know if it's a good decision or not. It, it did go up, uh, but it has corrected. I don't really look at it, to be honest, unless um, somebody mentions it. I'm looking at it now, but it seems to mirror some of the other projects you mentioned. And they look like they're going for another move to the upside. So perhaps there's something, some good news in, in the background, or they could just be bought up because other people are looking for speculative plays that haven't moved as yet. So either way, it's going to be an interesting space and there will be 
you know, some big winners in it. We just need to work out which ones it's going to be. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's take a look at one chain and then we'll look mm. into some of the viewer picks. We've had a number sure. coming in in the comments. Yes, uh, you mentioned some interesting names at the top of the show to me. So uh, let's uh, let's see what we got here. One chain. Right. So one chain. Um, we mentioned, I think last week again, that it was ready potentially for a breakout. It finally looks like it's done that through 24 cents. Um, and um, that's a really nice little breakout. There was evidence of acceleration. The next level it needs to get to is this line that I've already drawn in here at 33 cents. But this is looking more and more like a base. So an extended trend may not be far away. Uh, it's always been either on the sort of buy list or you know waiting for it to break out to give evidence that this this trend has started. So um, it is a favored project in that regard, but it does seem to have moved through some really interesting resistance. Um, next target is 33 cents, which it should break out from there. Um, there's a lot of strong resistance, really massive level. So I wouldn't rule out it touching it and coming off, but equally, I think the momentum from this move is ready to, to go through it. And that's really just how long it's spent forming this base. If we take this as the middle point in March 23, uh, the beginning point in May 22, the size of this is it's ready or should be ready now to take out that um, that resistance. In other words, this area here is kind of mirrored by this area here. So, um, so yeah, looking interesting, and it's a buy. Nice. I, I would agree, actually. It is looking really, really interesting. That chart looks solid. Um, it formed a really nice base, and bases don't form for forever. So it's like after it forms a really nice base, it's ready to run. So we see this double bottom here, or like I usually refer to it as a W. In fact, let me pull it up on coin um, on trading view. It's going to give me a little bit better view. Yeah, so we see this nice double bottom, or this is like a textbook W. And it comes down here. We got a higher low here. And this often signals that it's ready to rock. So, Wan Chain, I love the tech. The team, in my opinion, is one of the smartest in the industry. They are a strategic partner of the channel, which means they give us tokens that we give away on our Friday live streams once a month. And uh, that's been a beautiful relationship. They do have an amazing bridge that you can use to bridge stuff. So if you go to their one chain or one chain.org, you then can click here and go to their bridge and you can bridge funds across the different chains so easily. So you can pick an asset, say USDC that you want to send from ETH and then it will ask you to switch over to ETH and then you want to send it to Arbitrum or BNB or you can send it over even to um, all these different chains. You can even send it now to Cardano and you can um, then send it from, you know, put in the address you want it to send to and then you can bridge the amount over. So you can send USDC from ETH to Cardano or USDC from Wan chain to Cardano. Amazing. Like I remember when they launched in 2017, they were talking about how they were going to make cross chain technology interoperable so that you could talk across the chains. And I couldn't fathom what that looked like. Well, this is what it looks like. And their technology is amazing. And I just had a good friend use this for the first time. And he's like, wow, that was so simple. He had been sending his funds to an exchange and then withdrawing them in a different on to a different chain and, and paying higher fees than just bridging them from one chain like this and the complexity like how simple this was was cool anyway they've been nailing it with their tech so i i think their charts reflecting that it's ready to run 
So for me, it's a buy at this. Now the market cap is just at 54 million. So much more in my attractive zone of what I look for. It's not in the blue chip category at all yet. And so that's what I'm looking for. All right, let's get to some of the viewer picks. Going up to right as we were kicking off, Black Indian said, some OnlyFans coins, FanX, Only One, and Come Rocket, still low caps. We'll look at one or two of those. So maybe we'll look at FanX and Come Rocket. Now, Come Rocket is one that launched in 2021 and did crazy gains. It mostly launched as a meme coin at the time. I think they have since kind of given it some OnlyFans type utility. Now, OnlyFans is an interesting development that's come about in the last four years that guys, I guess, that just want some interaction with girls, they pay for that and they get photos and interactions rather than working on themselves to grow themselves to find a girlfriend. I prefer the work on yourself, grow yourself to find a girlfriend route. I think that's a much healthier way to go. But I understand that there's a market for OnlyFans, though I don't participate in it. Um, so the question is, is it worth trying to make some money in it? Well, so FanX, their token is front fans. Are you able to find it in a chart, Paul? Well, I've gone to Coin Market Cap. I've got it there with a chart. Um, yeah, I've, I've got it. I've got a chart we could look at that seems to be linked to trading view here um not much history so it's again one of those ones that we've got to be careful of but you know it's it's looks like it's gone through a cycle of an upward trend retracement um breakout in terms of an impulsive move that started a new trend technically it seems to be trading in a very interesting way it's stopped at its previous resistance come back for a pullback and now it looks like it's going to go again at a um at a higher level so it's got some staying power this one um yeah i mean i i guess on this chart and just reading this chart alone um which doesn't mean i would whether i'd buy it or not but on this chart it looks okay um i wouldn't say it's a uh you know a 90 or 80 percent buy i'd say it's more a 60 percent buy but that is definitely the for me the probability and it's come back and rebounded at quite an interesting support point here at two cents um taking out this this previous red candle um so yeah i i, I think very speculative but i wouldn't be averse to putting some money in it and, and assuming it goes to zero but being pleasantly surprised by breakout to new highs so in that regard it, for me it would be a buy yeah, this is an interesting one, and it was kind of fun to see the suggestion. I haven't paid attention to this at all. Uh, Come Rocket, I, I didn't invest in back in 2021. It's not that I wouldn't have, but by the time I really heard about it, it already had massive gains. And it was really just a meme coin. Back then, I still invested in meme coins. I don't anymore. I, I just don't touch them. These supposedly are developed to have some utility to them, but I would see them more as narrative plays. And here's why. Why do we need decentralization for something like OnlyFans? Like, we don't. Um, as far as I can tell, I, the truth is I don't use OnlyFans at all. So, uh, But I haven't heard complaints that it doesn't work for those who are looking for it. I don't know what benefit decentralization brings into it. So why does it need crypto? I don't think it does. However, sometimes when money comes in, it's new money and often dumb money. And they throw money at things. This is why meme coins pump at all is because they're just a narrative play. And as some meme coins take off, then like money gets those few meme coins do really well. And then, 10,000 other meme coins spring up and people try these different meme coins and they lose money on all these secondary meme coins. What I like about at least a narrative play on specific projects, if I am going to play a narrative, is that there's only a few competitors. And these projects have been working at least for some time trying to develop this. So those are likely the ones that are going to run. Now, I like where the market cap is. So I'm looking at front fans here or Fan X and the market cap's at two million. Um, 
self-reported circulating supply is already 100%. Could it have something malicious in the contract of the token? It could. And you always, you, you know, you want to look for some kind of certification by Certic or something else. And I don't know that there is one for this. Um, let's see. Let's look at the website and hopefully it's... No, I probably can't look at that website on YouTube. <laughs> um, I was going to say, you got me kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I'll share what it's saying. It's like age verification. Confirm that you're 18 years old. That probably means we're not going to then take a look at it. Um, but is this something I'd invest in? Only if I feel like the odds are way better for me than against me. Let's look over at the another one of the suggestions on Comrocket. Now, you can see what this one did in the last bull market, and it wasn't really being tracked here um, prior to this, but there was a prior to this, and it absolutely shot off like a rocket all the way to 20 cents <laughs> from Sorry. Um, below. Like, not it only shows it starting here at half a penny. I think it was much cheaper than that before it was even being tracked. So, it did come all the way down tremendously and interestingly enough it's been taking off again it looks like they've developed some use case so come rocket authentic connections chat with 100 percent real creators not chatters bots or agencies is what they say now mm -hmm. i i think they're kind of just throwing a use case in there is this use case really going to happen i would be surprised if it does so here's their one pager. And I, I don't like it when I see these kind of things. It's like, look, we got tweeted out by Elon Musk. Like that's their credibility piece. Um, <laughs> I like more credibility than that. Can something like this absolutely run? Yes, it can. And so I don't know like that I'm going to throw any money in this. Like, it's interesting, and the narrative, you would be surprised at how well the Vice narrative can run. It's quite crazy, because it kind of takes on meme coin status, but it's in the Vice narrative. Like, when Come Rocket ran before, some other meme coins were taking out, or taking off, and so then this meme coin comes out with a name like Come Rocket, and it just goes absolutely crazy, because it coupled Vice with the meme coin narrative. So now they're trying to throw some use case behind it. Now that OnlyFans is out and done so well and be like, oh, we're like OnlyFans too, but we'll make sure you're actually talking to the real person. I don't think that's going to be successful because a lot of these OnlyFans creators, they, they have people that manage the OnlyFans. You're probably not interacting with them. You're probably interacting with somebody from the Philippines or something that's interacting with you and you're giving them all kinds of money and these only fans creators, why would the hottest ones move over to a decentralized system? Well, they probably won't. Neither will the big agencies that run tons of models. So can a narrative still make good money? I'll keep an eye on this narrative. I'm not going to put any money in it as of yet. The chart is interesting. It's all of a sudden taking off here, which means something's going on. But um, I'm not putting any money on. It's just a wait for me. But it was a fun look at it. I'm, I'm glad um, it was brought up and could really just have this discussion. All right. Looking um, through the comments at other suggestions. Did you want me to look at this chart as well? Or should we move on? Oh, to yes. Uh, what am I doing? Paul, yes. Take sure. a look at it. Sure. Okay. Um, I mean, compared to the other one, there is more data which i like so we can see where it's you know come from and this was an, an excellent topping pattern so really good double double top and it's come down consolidated now we've got this reversal so you know there could be more upside I, I, for me i think diversification is not a bad strategy and whilst you know we could argue about the use case and maybe there's be another project that might do well in this space as opposed to this one, um, anything that has been tweeted by Elon Musk will just have more notoriety. That's not a bad thing. I'm not, obviously, it does guarantee that it's going to work, but that's some form of filter um, for me that he's done that. And if I was going to take a gamble on something, not having looked at anything in this sector until literally we we 
looked here, I'd probably just go with this one and just buy a small amount of it. And I like the chart. I like the breakout. It's broken out from you know 3.8 cents, which was key uh, resistance. So maybe somebody knew this was happening and was getting in before and they're chucking it out. Now we're, we're looking at it. So that's definitely possible. And I think there's a, a very strong chance that it will correct. But I think broader, the broader picture might be for it to continue this upward trend. And as long as it can kind of hold over this point, you know, 3.8 um, cents area or 0.38 cents area around here, then I wouldn't mind staying with it. But, you know, the other strategy for me would be just to put an amount of money that I could see go to zero and just forget about it. So um, that would be the other thing. But the only caveat is that you're saying that it's a meme coin and meme coins, you know, either you look at them or you don't, but you definitely get out of meme, meme coins um, when everything's frothing. Cause once that happens, and I don't think we're there yet, but but when we're near the end of the bull market or the bull phase, um, they could be the first to indicate the market's going down because, of course, people only start to hold things that have underlying value. Um, but even if they aren't, you know, in the correction, we want to be looking for things that have solid use cases anyway. So they'll be the first to go. And we're not there yet. So there could be quite a lot more to go in everything to the upside, whether it has value or not. Um, so. For me, it's a buy, um, but a very speculatively, highly speculative with all the warnings on it um, and with just a small amount of money. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, Elon Musk tweeting them out does give them notoriety that few tokens ever reach. And you made a good point on that. Um, that was way back, I think, in 2021. He tweeted them out oh. as they were going crazy and part of the reason. But still, that is like a token piece. So I, I guess it makes more sense why they're using that. Because um, uh, some people, like it's amazing the amount of status that he holds. And him tweeting something can take it 10x, 100x from where it would have been. Right. Okay. I thought that was a more recent thing. I couldn't see on, on my screen there that that was from a while back. I mean, now he's bought Twitter and you look at how many followers he's got, you know, 32 million or something like that, maybe more. Um, I, that, that definitely, if he was to repeat it, would be, you know, big, big publicity. So that's obviously waned. And in some ways for me, this this actually works more to its use case because it's, it's like, well, not use case, but it's works to its advantage because it's moving up, not because of that, which was a long time ago. That's all you know, in the past, but now it's moving on its own steam. So we shall see. Um, but technically, it, it's looking okay. James Brown here says he made a ton off Ave, bought before their token swap. <laughs> Good job, brother. Oh my gosh! So Ave was Ethland, and you know, Ethland became Ave, and they rebranded, and it went through a crazy run up. Um, Okay, so looking through, Justin says Savage is going off. So let's take a look at Savage. Yeah, I must admit, I did try and find Savage, and it's not um, Coin Market Cap and Coin Gecko, though Coin Gecko yeah. has more accurate data. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's have a look. Um, right. All, and let's get a chart here. Uh, Savage going off. Uh, is it? It's it's going up, um, possibly basing, and it looking interesting. And it would be a tentative buy, but there's some resistance up ahead that I'd be, you know, looking out for. Um, you know, at uh, seven point seven of a cent, and up again at uh, just over one cent. Um, if this is the correct one, I couldn't find it on uh, Coin. Um, coin trader on the other charting system some reason even if it's if it's on here it doesn't necessarily translate across to the other system um but in any case yeah it's moving up um it's still uh you know in its basing phase so it hasn't completed that yet I, i'd like there to be a bit more data as well um mm -hmm. but i guess you can't you know it started when it started so that's there's not much you can do about that but 
this is the real point. 1.1 cent for me is where it crosses through key resistance. I'd feel a lot better about it being a buy once it does that because that would have formed a you know a double bottom um which is a strong indication of a base at the moment it's just recovering from a previous correction if i get that out of the way you can see how it's recovered from the previous correction and it's moving up it's actually moving up in a way that i think needs to start to accelerate a bit more um it could do with accelerating just to show that there's some good interest behind it um because that is a fairly consistent, smooth downward trend, and it's only just recovering that. There's a bit of resistance where it is now. So let's see how it trades around these levels, see if we can take that out. But, you know, I think it will, because broadly speaking, the macro picture is, is looking good. But, you know, I, d I don't know anything about it or what it does. So I'll be just curious to know what sector it's in. But if I could, if it was com this compared to something else, I think I'd probably just trade something else and just wait and see how this plays but as i've said before i mean i'm in quite a bullish mood at the moment from the macro position so i'd probably go with it yeah so i was able to find it on trading view and um, versus the us dollar it had it also versus eth which wasn't very helpful but like what i do look for is for a double bottom is a higher low and this is unless i counted this little wick down this is actually a lower low but i i like savage's price now coin gecko has better information on this so the market cap is at 2.5 million now i was buying this when it was half the price it is now so it's doubled um and i shared with some of the people in the discord especially in my trades that i was buying savage now here's a little bit, and, and I still like it at this price. I was still ready to buy. Here's a little bit about Savage. If you go to their medium page, and the easiest way to get to their medium is from CoinGecko. You click on savageofficial.medium.com, and you'll see some of their articles. Why photographers and filmmakers are turning to NFTs. AK videography in the metaverse. So essentially, it'll be a marketplace for high definition footage for sometimes actually a lot of the TVs. So if you walk into Walmart or you walk into Target or Costco or Best Buy or whatever electronics store, Fry's Electronics, you'll see a bunch of TVs are running some really high definition video so they can show off the capabilities of it. Well, so there's a marketplace for that video content, not only for that, but for B-roll film for movies or for other commercials or other things. And it makes sense that a better marketplace for that would be utilizing NFTs, that that video could be encapsulated as an NFT. Because a lot of times, like when Sony buys some 8K video to run on their TVs, they want exclusivity to that. So they don't want to buy it. And then that also that video footage gets sold to 10 other providers. So in a marketplace like this, that video could be encapsulated into one NFT that they then buy and they own and there are no duplicates of it. And, um, so I, I like where they're going. Their nearest competitor is Theta. Now, Theta has an amazing CEO and a really strong team, and they've been around for a long time. So comparing the two is a little bit hard. Like Savage has a very smart, hardworking, dedicated small team trying to make something happen. And Theta has a much bigger team now. They were once small way back here and so theta was once you know 11 cents and in the previous bull run they reached 12 dollars and even now they're at uh 1.3 or they're at a market cap of 1.3 billion so you can see that if savage comes together and does well the upside potential on it is quite high that it could 500x this price and go into the billions so that's interesting to me. They also have a partnership with Samsung, I think. So, um, yeah, 
anyway, it's one that's kind of been forgotten during the bear market and most people haven't been thinking about. And that was kind of my clue was that nobody was thinking about him. I saw these lower prices and I was like, oh, it's time to buy more. I already had some and I bought some more. Just to um, just to say that actually the chart that I got from Coin Market Cap, which I always assume is is correct, hasn't actually updated since what it's looking like here the 11th of um, or 18th of December. So going back over to the um, Coin Trader Pro site, we can see it has actually gone a lot further. So I can understand why now you're saying that it has run quite nicely. And um, yeah, it does. It does look like it's got more to go. There is a bit of resistance coming up. The levels on the two charts are slightly different, so I'm not really sure whether something's happened and it's it's uh, being priced slightly differently or not. Um, but but either way, if we're taking this this chart as being the correct one, which is the most looks like it's the most up to date one, um, it definitely has had a very good move to the upside. And I just like to say also, just kind of backing up what you're saying, really. Um, I know a bit about this space because my wife does stock photography or has done. Problem mm -hmm. with that is it's very similar to video. If you if you create a product and then you put it out there on the internet and somebody pays for it, so some of her photos might appear in a newspaper, you never really know whether they've actually bought that from the site that you've sold it to, from the stock photography site like Getty Images. So Getty Images may have sold that to that newspaper, in which case you will then receive a commission, very small one, I might add, but, you know, you receive a commission. But somebody else might have just clipped it and used it without permission, without paying. And you don't really know without ha actually having to chase up that person and say, look, you know, where did you find that and have you paid for it? And it's almost impossible to chase people down for all the content that's on the Internet. So this sort of thing, blockchain technology, would be perfect to stop that happening, to allow content creators to be paid for the work that they create um, and to know that they're being properly paid. So it'll be interesting to see how this um, plan pans out. But I'd say it's definitely an area that has a great use case for this technology. So I hope it does well. Yeah, I, it'll be interesting to see what kind of safeguards can come together, because one of the one of the necessary things to allowing a sector to really flourish is to allow the content creator to not be cut out. And so though, like we all like it when Napster came out, when you cut out the music artists from making any money from their product, the problem is they can't afford to produce it. So the amount of quality music that gets produced goes way down. If you allow them to be cut out and we all like the idea of free, It'll be interesting because, as Paul said, like especially with stock photography, once somebody buys a high resolution image, they can then just share it out to 500 of their friends. And it's hard for them to track down. Did they have the rights or not to that? And so then the photographer doesn't make the appropriate money because they only made a tiny commission off that one purchase. It was then shared out to a whole bunch of people. And so the content creator isn't able to capture the money on that. And so they're not going to be able to put as much investment into making more good stuff. So though it seems kind of cool that you could get it for free or there are end runs about it, if everyone's doing that, then the content just doesn't get created. And so it, it does hurt the space over time. And being able to encapsulate things in NFTs means in the future, maybe there are ways that, and even if the commissions are very small per time, a piece of art is sold or a picture is sold, um, but it gets sold 10,000 different times, then the artist can make pretty good money and nobody's paying very much for it. And so I think that's a vibrant market if there's a way to use NFTs to ensure that somebody has purchased it, owns it and has rights to that. Uh, and they're trying to do that with video, right? So I think that video... Yeah. I mean, so when I talk to Luke at Savage, um, the CEO goodness, like a year and a half ago, he was telling me about the market there is for 8K video and that a lot of times these places want exclusivity to that video. So they'll pay quite a bit for it. And NFTs are perfect for that. And they're not going to then share it out with anyone else because they don't want it showing up on somebody else's TV. And 
it, it made sense to put that kind of marketplace in NFTs. Um, I, I can't say I know a ton about video production to know the breadth of this. But the narrative in the market makes sense and their market cap's really low. So I could see something like this, even when crypto hits, going 50x or 100x or 500x. I would love a 500x from here. That's what I hope for. So that's why Savage gets a buy from me. Um, even at this price, it was a little bit juicier at half price from here, but still a very juicy price. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, let's take a look at Akomi. What do you think on these charts? Sure. I, I just popped it up while we were chatting because, um, you know, I just thought uh, a comment on it. And uh, no no change really from last week. Um, it's held support. And we need we still really need, do need it to go through this um, 30797 area. That is the closest resistance. But it's holding up. It's holding up and it's moving up slowly. Um, so, yeah, it's still a tentative buy and I would hold it unless it breaks this this low. I think we've got we've seen that the support is there. And from a technical point of view, unless it breaks that, I'm going to hold a cautiously positive view. So. So it's a buy. I like double bottom patterns, right? And there's no guarantee. I'm just playing the odds. So when we see this nice double bottom bottom pattern happening here, that doesn't mean it's going to continue to stay down here. Um, but the odds are with me that it's based out and it's ready to run up. And you see that at a time that the community, hold on, look. Ah, sneeze. You see that at the time that the community is worried, scared, the FUD is at complete highs. And this is why most people are made not to buy at the bottom. They just can't because they can't see past all the FUD. I mean, fundamentally, the project is one of the strongest in the digital collectible space. The digital collectibles narrative hasn't run in quite a while. So just people are scared. And, you know, they... You know, who is it that said Warren Buffett or someone I buy when there's blood in the streets, even if it's my own blood. And some people just literally can't do that. And so I, I recently recorded a number of shorter videos to be released during these holidays. They're just two to three minutes long. And one of them is talking about, uh, you know, that 75 percent of people, they literally just can't buy these kind of lows. They just cannot see past all the emotions that they feel because emotionally it's hard to buy these signs. Logically, this is what you look for. I mean, this is a bottom. So what you do is you see this kind of bottom, you say, oh my gosh, who is the project behind this and what fundamentally is going on with this? Oh, they're still able to sell out massive numbers of digital collectibles, even though they've had some hiccups on drops recently. They still are one of the best functioning digital collectible spaces out there. They have some of the top IP like there's lots of good things coming that people are feeling impatient towards them releasing, but this is what buying low looks like and the FUD that goes along with it and the emotions being so high and strong and the fear that, oh, they're going to fail being so high. That's what creates these kind of lows. That's why charts sometimes look like this. And so 75% people cannot override their fear to buy when it's this low. They will buy the reverse of when it's climbing up like this. At some point, it likely will. And that's when they can finally buy because they're just too fearful to be able to buy at these lows. I have really been enjoying these lows. I'm so glad it came back near. I didn't have a lot of money free to buy. I did buy as much as I could during this low period. And then it's come back down for another juicy second buy period for me. And I hoped it would come back down like this. And it has. So I've been loving this time. Yeah, I know nobody is covering Omi right now very much other than some of my Omi homies. <clears throat> and, you know, we do a Monday episode of Around the Comiverse, which we didn't have this last Monday because of the holidays. Um, but I think Omi is a strong buy and people are just scared because we're human beings and, you know, people have a hard time buying at lows. Cool. Uh, it's a strong buy for me at this price, even though like, do I wish the market 
Do I wish the market cap was even lower than it is? This is one of the higher market cap projects that I'm buying. And our market cap is only at 194 million. Do I wish the market cap was lower? Yeah, I, I wish it was. Can it do a 50 or 100x from here? Well, I believe it can. That's why I'm still buying it. If I didn't believe it couldn't do at least a 50 or 100x from here, I wouldn't be buying it. Cool. All right, let's take a look at what other suggestions we have in the comments that I missed. We've had a lot of good comments coming in today. Um, jumped around a little bit. Animal concerts, sleeping giant still. Um, could be, or it could fail, but I did recently pick up more animal concerts. And uh, so the chart's been interesting. It's picked up some momentum. You can get it on PancakeSwap is the easiest place to get it or on QuickSwap. So it's both on the Binance Smart Chain and on Polygon. You can also get on MEXC, which I think you can, if you're in the U.S., you can use a VPN to create an account and use MEXC. Um, you can get on Uniswap, though. I wouldn't recommend it. And Animal Concerts is a project to host... Um, concerts in the metaverses right so is it going to work out i don't know their ceo suddenly left like nine months ago and they've replaced him with a different ceo and that they've been tweeting and it gets a little bit scary of like is it going to happen so they just tweet again 11 hours ago they tweet like every couple weeks so they're kind of coasting probably waiting for the market to turn around. So um, is it a concern? Yep. It's a concern. It might not make it. I think they do. And so it's kind of like, say there's a 50% chance it completely fails at this point. But if it doesn't fail, it goes 50 to 500 X. Um, that's the bet I'm making, right? Is that, okay, there might even be a 50% chance it fails at this point. But if it doesn't fail, the kind of gains that I'd make are so big. Now, am I going to throw like half my portfolio into a project like this? Never. But uh, a small amount? Absolutely. Which is exactly what I did. What do you think about their charts? This has been one that I've liked. And we again, we've talked about it a few times. The metaverse um, and the, the use case is a really interesting one. And I know that's a fundamental thing, but I... You know, it's not that I completely ignore that when I'm looking at the chart. It's just nice to have that story in the background. Again, I don't know whether this is going to be the main winner, but I like the idea of the metaverse. I always look at Meta as a stock, as a proxy for how well these potential coins and projects could do. And that's had a tremendous run. So with the metaverse itself being slightly, um, you know, in the shadows a little bit, and people not talking about it again, there is potential for that to froth up once again. So I think this is interesting. The metaverse projects are interesting still. And I would break this a buy from a pure technical point of view, even without you know looking at the sector that it's in. Sure, it's still relatively close to its low, and there is potential, much more potential for it to accelerate, um, which may or may not happen. Um, but it's had its bear market. It's now trying to recover. And I'd be inclined to go with that. So for me, it's a buy. Awesome. I was looking through the comments and finding some more. Yeah, I like Animal Concerts. I have been buying it. Um, I'm looking at another one, uh, or I was pulling up some details on another one that was suggested. And that's Somnian Space. Now, this is another kind of VR play, and um, they previously hit a high of around $18. They're currently trading about $0.88 cents with a market cap of $12 million. It looks like 40% of their total supply is in percolation. I was checking out their website a little bit. So it looks like two things are going on. It looks like they might be trying to make their own headsets, which I think would not be a good way to go. Um, I'm not interested in buying their stuff. They would be competing against Apple for those. 
and like <laughs> other projects like Facebook's Meta for making the headsets. I, I think being the hardware production is a major mistake. Um, they're also in the VR space. I don't like that they're splitting their seem to be splitting their focus. So maybe um, someone who may be knows more about this can fill us in. But like, it's not likely that they have better engineers. Like this is a great way to go out of business trying to compete with Facebook on making this technology. Unless you just happen to have the team of the best in the world who will work for free and return for stock options. Um, but even then you're going to be spending a lot on components as you develop this. So maybe they're just reselling someone else's stuff there, which wouldn't be a bad way to go if that's all they're doing. If they're trying to develop it, that's a mistake, a huge mistake. Now, th it looks like they, they have their PC version and then they have their web client version. And you can see the PC version has higher quality than the web version. The web version is okay too. Essentially, they're trying to compete in this space. This is one that might do well as the overall market does well. So that's a little bit on the fundamentals behind it. So let's let the charts do the talking. Way back when it launched in 2020, the token got as cheap as about four cents. It's currently trading 22x up from that. Its previous highs were at 17 or $18. So it's down 95% from its highs. Um, I'm not sure what I think of it. Let's look mostly at the last year. So it did hit 65 cents. I've kind of passively kept an eye on this one. I just see that they're in a space that I think will do well, but I, I don't notice anything specific about their technology that makes me think this might be the one that does really well. So I, I guess that's why I've never paid particularly close attention to this one. Paul, what are you seeing on the chart? For me, it's just a wait. I just fundamentals. I like the area that it's in, but I just don't know why I should believe in their specific project. Yeah, um, I'm just actually, I couldn't see the token name until just, I, I just made this, the chart oh, a bit bigger here. Is, the, is this the right one? Yeah, that's the right one. Does that look correct to you? Yep. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Hang on. That's not really been updated. So let's have a look. Let's see if we can find another one. Um might have to go to coin market cap. So it's cube is the is the 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 name of it. So let's just get that in there. Yeah. And bit of history. Let's change that to log. Yeah, I, it's very similar to the previous chart. It's just not been up there. Hmm. I, I definitely wait for me to. It's it's off its low, which is a good sign. I'm just going to jump to the other chart so I can explain a bit better. Even though this isn't a complete up to date chart, it's similar enough. Um, we can see it's off the low, which is good. It has had a decent run percentage terms. That's that's fine. This could well be a consolidation, and there's a ton of resistance at one dollar five and at point oh five, not one dollar fifty. Um, so $1.05 is where it's stopped, and we can see why that's the case. So for me, it needs to break through there before I would um, initiate a buy signal, simply because it would be too easy for it to drop back. And, um, you know, this is such a powerful downward trend. I need just a bit more evidence that it's based. Now, we'd actually get that all the way up here at $2.30. And you might say, well, why would you wait for it to go to $2.30 before deciding to buy? And you wouldn't necessarily have to. You can buy it along the way. You can buy at any point. But it would just indicate that this whole area here would be a massive base and there'd be much more upside to go from there. Um, but certainly in the short term, I think this is um, it, it's looking like a potential consolidation, which is a good sign from this move, but I just want to see it break out. Um, and that, as I say, would be through a dollar and 0 0.05. And a dollar is always a good place to look for resistance because it's psychological and people who bought it would look to take profits in that first move. So a break through that would um, convince me that technically it, it, was, it would be worth, you know, 
probability of it going higher. So that's where I'd buy it through a breakthrough 105.05. All right. And it may play out that way. I mean, it does look like a double bottom there and a pretty solid base all the way back from December 2022, just making it almost to those lows recently back in maybe October. And so maybe it is ready to run. The market cap isn't terrible on it. Uh, the market cap's at 12 million. So it's still fairly cheap that if it does get some momentum, could go to a market cap of a billion dollars. So yeah, we'll see on this one. I've just had a hard time thinking, gosh, why is this one going to get used versus the other things? What's special about it? And their graphics always seem just okay. Their technology seemed just okay. It just kind of seemed lukewarm to me every time I've researched it. Nothing was like, ah, I really like this. But I do like the chart. So there's that. All right. Let's see comments. Uh, G Money says, I'm not scared. Probably referring to Omi. That's awesome. Justin says, Secret Rare Spider-Mans have been selling. Vladimir says, um, Omi holding strong. Can we check out Engine? Engine, I haven't taken that serious in a while. Even though they pioneered the essentially <laughs> the NFT space. They developed one of the standard for NFTs. But at the time in the early days of blockchain gaming, it wasn't clear, like this idea of ownership within gaming, I knew would be really, really good. And Engine was one of the first projects really working on that. And they had this idea, which it's not played out that way at all. They're like, okay, we have this and we're, we have this token. And what we're going to do is we're going to make NFTs and we're going to encapsulate our token within those NFTs. So later you can like burn the NFT and you can get the tokens out of it. But say we make a sword for one game, that sword might end up being a gun for another game or any game could choose how to make an iteration of that NFT. And the complexity of that, like it seems like kind of a dumb idea, but at the time, like it wasn't very mapped out how this could go at all. And uh, it has not played out that way because it's far too complex. Like, why is a game going to use a specific NFT from a different game is really the question they could have asked back then. And the question is the game maker wouldn't unless they had to or there was some major value to it. And it just hasn't turned out to play out that way. But it hasn't stopped Engine from doing well. And Engine, in some ways, has turned into a VC investing in other blockchain gaming projects. And so we did see, I did make some really good money in the 2021 bull run because I was buying this in 2020 when it fell out of the narrative and everybody was ignoring it was when I bought this. So I made really good money, but I did sell out 100% of it during the 2021 run and haven't bought back in. Though the chart's looking somewhat interesting. What are you thinking about the chart for engine? Yeah, um, we have looked at this before and, uh, you know, I do like it. I still like it. Um, this is, you see the strong bear market. This area here is a base. Uh, we've got a higher low break through the double bottom um, resistance here. It's uh, seven, uh, you know, point zero zero seven. A um, little consolidation there to be expected, but the trend is still going up. So, you know, uh, for me, it's still a buy. Um, now, where do I think resistance will come in? Possibly fairly close at 1.2 cents. And it will have a correction, but I like this base. So whilst it's over this seventh of a cent point, this double bottom base point, for me, it's going to be a buy. So, you know, or still a buy. Um, but yeah, it's a, a very smooth chart to the downside, classic reversal pattern. Um, and we haven't looked at it in a while. So, you know, thanks for. Thanks for mentioning it. Yeah, interesting price production. I don't know what they're doing to stay relevant. Um, their market cap is at 416 million. I, I guess maybe let's check out their Twitter and see if that gives us an idea. The only full scope ecosystem of Web3 tools, creators of ERC 1155, Engine Blockchain, Platform Wallet, Beam. Oh, did they make Beam? Interesting. If they did, um, Beam has become highly relevant. That would be interesting. Um, I hadn't heard of, maybe they're one of the backers of Beam that helped make it happen. 
I mean, the people behind Engine are the OGs of NFTs in the blockchain gaming space. So maybe they continue to stay relevant through, uh, I, I guess, kind of investment. So what is their token going to do from here? I don't know. What's funny is sometimes it doesn't make sense that the token pumps, because sometimes just a narrative pumps and people want to buy something in that narrative. And so they just buy the token. You see this in AI blockchain projects. As AI goes crazy, people just buy any kind of token associated with AI, even if the use case for that token really doesn't have much of one. So, um, yeah, we'll see. It, their chart doesn't look very bad. Like, uh, obviously, the bigger chart looks like it's way down, and I like to buy when it's cheap. But their more relevant chart is it looks like it's based out. It hit like a second bottom here. And maybe it's ready to run. So, And it's not up. It's 2x up from its lows, which isn't bad. Interesting. For me, it's just outside of the market cap that like it. I don't really want it, that market cap. Am I buying it? No. Um I'm, I'm in riskier projects. The only one that's got a market cap near the size that I'm really buying is Sakomi. So, all right, let's see if there's anything else. Cloud Macro says, hello, OneChain have a great team and great project. OneChain is really different. OneChain is fast, secure OneChain without hack. That's true. They have been running for like five and a half years now. And um, they actually have been really secure. If you watch the interview I did with Dr. Ouija, uh, the, the guy is brilliant. They have some of the best engineers in crypto, in my opinion. So um, everything Cloud Macro says here, I agree with. So, I, mean, I believe they're working on some types of sensitivity suite. Um, Sour D, is that in reference to oh, Somnium? So I believe Somnium is working on some type of sensitivity suit for the metaverse, but I have to do more research. That's interesting. Um, it's funny how movies sometimes direct production of equipment. So back in the like 60s when they did Star Trek, they would actually do video calls from ship to ship up on the big screen, right? That was not a capability that could really be done at the time. And yet now, I mean, we're using that technology to speak right now. Um, they, they had these little communicators that they would call the ship, right? Well, some of the first cell phones, some of the early versions of cell phones looked a lot like those communicators. So sometimes mm -hmm. movies direct development and they had that movie Ready Player One and they had this sensitivity suit, right? Um, in, interesting. Are they the ones, I don't know if, Gosh, I can't imagine a crypto project has the engineers towards producing hardware. Like that's not where crypto really excels and crypto investment really excels. A lot of it is like the programming side and the new ideas side of that. But making hardware, that's a concern for me. And it seems like Somnium is trying to compete in the hardware arena. And that's definitely a worry for me right so if they're trying to produce this hardware and a sensitivity suit i would really have to know why their engineers are going to be better than say because tesla could move into that space take some of their really smart engineers and they could crush in this apple um you know facebook has been directing towards this way so why would a crypto company with somewhat limited funds be able to come in and compete with those behemoths on hardware production hardware production is very very expensive versus software production can be somewhat less expensive to produce and new ideas so i just don't know that a crypto company is going to be able to compete in hardware like that that's my concerns roberto arias says drive is looking good drive has been running i would say they're still at a concern point drive is um, in that they're probably low on money, limping along through the bear market like a lot of projects. And uh, their tokens gone up, geez, um, actually more than I realized in the last little bit.
Yeah. So, sorry, did you want me to talk on it or? Yeah, yeah. Take a look at it. what are you seeing in the charts? Yeah, I, again, this is this is one that's moving off the low. I, we've looked at it occasionally. Um, it had its run here, which was a bit early because of the bear market. It wasn't sustained, managed to hold on to its lows. And it was just kind of sleeping a bit. But yeah, it's definitely woken up now. Um, there's some resistance around current levels, which is why you're seeing a bit of volatility. Um, it really needs to take out this level here, which is at um, 2.6 cents. If it can do that, um, then for me, the base is complete, but it's on its way to doing that. So I can understand why people would want to buy ahead of it. Um, because once it's done that, the base will be complete and there should be much more upside. So again, with my speculative hat on because of the macro situation, I, I put it in the buy camp. Yeah, that chart looks like it, it did put in a lower low and, and I don't prefer to see that, but that often does happen even as it's preparing to run. So let me just switch over. I want to look at it on trading view because I'm likely to get a a little bit easier to analyze chart. Okay, so here's Drife, and we saw it got punished during the bear market like everything did. And so during the metaverse run, they did take back off and went up, and then they came down to these abysmal lows and got absolutely punished. So their market cap is sitting at 1.7 million, so really low market cap. If we zoom um, in, you, you've got my screen. Oh, nobody's seeing one. <laughs> well, shoot. Okay, so here's what I'm looking at on Trading View, and it they put in a lower low here than what they had got done last year, but just by a little bit. And you're seeing some really strong support happen here. So that was at 0 0.04 cents. It now has run all the way up to, at this point, exceeding 0 0.2 cents. So it went about 5x from the bottom. And it's generally trending upward from here. And maybe it's ready to rumble. Um, market cap is still really low at 1.7 million. So my concern with this is just whether they'll survive. And this is another one of those, like, say there's a 50% chance that they survive from here. And maybe it's higher than that, but let's say it's 50%. But if they survive from here, let's say they do 100x from here. Okay, would you take that bet? Well, not with all your funds. That wouldn't be very bright, but um, I take that bet in crypto. So I feel like the odds are stacked in my favor, even though maybe... If I'm right on the odds, I have a 50% chance of winning. And if I lose and they go out of business, I lose almost all my money I put into it. But if I am right, then they might do a 50 or 100 or 200 or 300 X. So that's the type of odds I look for. So on average, if I played that type of bet out over and over and over again and say on average they went up 100 X, well, 50% of the time I would lose and 50% of the time do 100x and that would average out to a 50x over a, across a number of projects. And I like those types of numbers. So these are the type of bets I look to take. Um, even at this, it's still a buy just because it's so low still. But uh, now it would it's easy to look back and say that you would have bought here, but down here it was <laughs> even seem like a 60 or 70 percent chance they might go out of business so the the more the better the price does the more solvent the team is because they'll have tokens and they'll have ecosystem tokens they can sell so it's almost like the price going up from here becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy the price goes up high enough then the team will be completely flush with cash and have a really small likelihood of going out uh, business. So I, I would still rate it a buy. It's not just it's not as juicy as it was, but it's still pretty juicy at a one point seven million dollar market cap. Cool. Um, Yvonne has asked, or someone's asked a couple of times for the Shield token. We haven't looked at that in for forever. Why don't we take that as our last one to look at? Okay, I don't I don't ever remember looking at it to be honest. Um, so 
but I'd be happy to take a look. Let's it was look. quite a while ago, and they okay. are a competitor to Vivi. They just okay. haven't done as well as uh, Vivi has. And okay. so, oh no, Project Seed, this, I thought this was... No, it is actually a different project than I was thinking of. So mm. chill. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, not sure we got an up to date price here again. Um, so I'm going to have to say that with caution about the way this chart looks, it's been in a very strong downward trend. Um, let's have another look. See if I can get it on here. Chill. So shill token, the first one, we get nothing from there. Shill, let's try just shill here. No, nothing from that either. Okay, so back to this chart. It, it doesn't look like it's completely up to date. If I put that there, we've got um, the 18th as opposed to you know, where we are now. So... It might be just updated every week for some reason. Um, but anyway, it's been in a strong downward trend and it's turning around. I mean, it, to be fair, it's trying to go up. There's a lot of resistance at one and a half cents here. And again, we can see that's where the peaks have been. So it's got close, it's got sold there. Um, but I think it's going to try and break higher. I'm not going to say that it's one that I would be buying into just because it's still got a bit more work to do to convince me it's properly based as opposed to this just sort of retracing a bit and then continuing this downward trend so it's not enough to call below but it is trying to it's definitely moving up um it just needs to do a bit more for me before i would buy so it's going to have to be a wait for me but you know definitely ask about it in a few weeks time and we'll see what sort of update we've got on the chart, whether it's moved into a buy position. Yeah, I was taking a look more at the fundamentals and um, I have looked at this one, but it was literally like two years ago before they had launched. So there's a lot more information out. It, they're trying to build a gaming ecosystem. It looks like they're both on DNB chain and Solana. Um, so they've probably been running pretty much as blockchain gaming has been running. Let's just see what the timeline coincides with. So they bottomed out here in October is people started talking about blockchain gaming in November. It started to come up. So let's look really at the last year. So they've gone up 4x from their lows and recently really been on a run. Huh, interesting. Market caps at 7.5 million. It looks like 35% of their tokens are in circulation. Interesting. So, um, yeah, it, it's hard to tell all that much from the website. Really, when I'm doing further research, what I do look for is primarily interviews with the teams. That gives me a lot of information on who's behind it because who's behind it is going to make a difference on how good it really turns out. I mean, the graphics look just okay, not stunning or stellar. I would hope to see a little bit better from them. Um, but interviews give you a feel for who the team is behind it, if there are those. That's one of my next steps I do. All right. Well, thank you, Evan Curtis. Says, hope you're having a good day, Crypto Rain. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Cool. I think that wraps it up for today. I know there's some more things. Uh, we got to cut it off. We're right at about two hours. Paul, thanks yeah, so much we, for joining us. Yeah, no problem. We could always look next week. Thanks for all your picks. And yeah, you um, want to do a Tuesday next week at the regular time then? If that's okay with you. Let's do it. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. And I uh, hope you're having a nice holiday season, and we'll see you next week. All right. We'll see you, Paul. So a lot of what we're feeling now feels like what happened in 2020. So 2020, in mid-2020, actually, one narrative started popping off, but nothing else was really popping off. And that was DeFi. DeFi went absolutely berserk, but most of the other things weren't popping off. NFTs popped off later that year. It's really people started talking about NFTs. 
So September, October, November, and then Bitcoin really started to climb in 2020 and leading into 2021, which was an amazing year for crypto. It feels a lot like 2020, what we've been going through. And so we're we're seeing kind of, I think of it a lot of times like popcorn. When you throw the bag in the microwave, it takes a minute or two before you hear anything popping. And then you start getting a few pops. And then you later get a whole bunch of pops. So we've been feeling a few pops. But next year is probably going to be when it goes absolutely berserk. So if there are little lulls in this market, that's okay. That is actually a good time for dollar cost averaging in the projects that you're looking for. Like I imagine, like we talked about at the top of the show, that there will be some pullbacks at some point. And that's usually a good time to pick up. And um, when things have run up, it's not a bad time, like I was talking about, to take profits on some things and harvest some of those gains to either set on the sidelines or pick up things that you're really interested in that haven't run yet. All right. That's all I have for you. I hope you enjoy our wrap. We'll see you next time. To the space, chasing all of the gains, chasing the pumps and all of the hype trains. But like in life, uh, shit, right before you could. It was told to buy when it was pouring like a rain, making sure. I buy when it's down, don't chase the boats that I miss, uh, cause I always made the time in mind. I sit the one out, cause I'm patient like that. Hands off, wait for the right time. I sell when it's high, I buy when it's low. They call me rich, they call me smart. I'm just a rainmaker running the show. Calculated investments, I don't leave with my heart. The principles are simple, they're leaving a lot. Why when it's boring, just gotta be smart. I saw when it's hype, like all the channels they pump it. That's when I was selling the parabolic and dumped it. They call me rich, they call me smart. I'm a rainmaker, making my own start. I'm with the future, learning the past. Makes the time fly by, years going so fast. The game plan is mine, I'll own it now. When I reach the top, hey, it's asking me how. Cause I'm a rainmaker. Investments I love And I follow what I learn Not relying on luck uh, Time is never better The time like the present The next five years is a gift And it's feeling like heaven I'm committed to learn Studying to know that Nothing comes easy But when knowledge the game show Thinking out this wrong Cause soon will come a bear market Learning and growing And when it's slow would be the target They say it's come out Bitcoin is dead The massive decreases Can get to your head Sticking around The time is better Strong like that I'll let the others be fretters In two years time The ball will bring back the games That makes it worth the effort Cause here comes the rain So let's go rain makers Let's make it all happen The goal of the hate Say the haters be crapping I'm here for five years Let's do this together the time is right, the time could be better They call me rich, they call me smart I'm a rainmaker, making my own start I'm with the future, learning the past Makes the time fly by, years going so fast This game plan is mine, I'll own it now When I reach the top, hey, it's asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh, Haters be hating, the time has slowed down Addressing what they say when I'm wearing my crown They're chasing green candles like someone who was new I got a vision that was bigger, help for me to push through. push through I'm still human and sometimes it is rough and that's what makes me special simply I stay tough cause I'm a rainmaker investments I love and I follow what I learn not relying on luck uh.